Hey everybody and thank you for coming to my channel. Today I am posting a video about healing. Um, I have had a large increase in requests, reading requests for um, the topic of healing as well as many um, suggestions in my email about doing a video on healing. So um, this morning I started my meditative session I was going to do channeled messages today for Zodiacs and uh, without even thinking about it, I guess, without my intention being the subject of healing today, that is what my channeled messages was bombarded with. So I think it's time I put a video out. Um, I have been experiencing some uh, heartache, I guess you could call it heartache, heartbreak, breakdown, whatever, um, in the last couple of weeks as well. So um, it was a nice uh, channeled message session that I was able to receive as well. And I wanted to pass that on to you guys. So um, for those of you who don't know, uh, a couple weeks ago, I experienced one of probably, no, most definitely one of the most traumatic situations uh, in my lifetime. And I hope to never experience something uh, like that again. So I have really been needing to hear these messages as well. Um, my Kind of my backstory is um, my grandma, who was my my spiritual inspiration, my my mentor, um, had passed away a couple years ago. Well, after the situation that I had experienced uh, at the end of August, I went to her gravestone and was sitting there talking to her, even though, um, you know, I talked to her anywhere. I wanted to put flowers on her grave because it was her birthday. So. I was sitting there uh, bawling my eyes out and I just said to her, why did this happen? I got nothing. You know, why did this happen to me? I got nothing. And instead of putting the focus on me, I kind of switched my perception and I said, please at least give me a sign that shows me that there is a reason for all this pain. That what ha happened had to happen for everybody it affected. And I had my eyes closed. I was kneeling down in front of her headstone and I opened my eyes and I looked up and I'm not even kidding, the entire sky in the cemetery, the entire cemetery was filled with those little like cotton ball things that float through the air, um, which for me was, uh, it was confirmation because as a little kid, we used to, you know, blow those little weeds. I don't know, those little dandelion weeds and they'd go everywhere. Um, so my grandma used to say when we'd see the little cotton balls flying through the air that, um, those were all the wishes that the angels were, um, granting that day. So to have that spiritual connection, that spiritual tie back to that when I opened my, and I cried even harder because in the midst of pain, it is so hard to see what the benefit is. How is this going to help me? Why is my pain have to be felt in this way in order for me to, to receive a blessing out of it? So it's so hard when you're in the healing process to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So um, that for me just gave me confirmation that no matter how traumatic it was, no matter how broken we feel, there is a true reason for everything to happen. Um, I've been broken many times in my life, as I am sure you as well, um, more times than people know because we don't run around telling everybody about every little heartbreak or hurt we have. Instead, we keep it within, which um, can build up over time, bringing a heaviness to us. 
So when we experience, no matter how big or little those hurts are, um, it's so important to process those as they happen and to release them in a healthy way. Um, over my lifespan, I've also had many, many, uh, many, my fair share of challenges. But the majority of those were the direct result of my choices, um, situations I put myself in, bad decisions, impulses, um, but it all directed back to me. Very few of the challenges and heartbreaks that we experience in our life are truly at the hands of others. But when that is the situation, that makes it that much more harder to deal with. When we put ourselves in those challenges, when we create our own heartbreak, we have somewhere to put the blame. We can say, you know, I shouldn't have done that. That was my, you know, when we are able to put the blame on ourselves, it's a little bit easier to deal with than to experience pain and suffering and heartache and betrayal and, and just, you know, broken trust when we truly didn't deserve it. Um, and that's the difficult um, heartbreak that people have trouble moving forward um, from. So, you know, like I said, I've been hurt many times in my life, um, but I truly was not broken um, until four years ago when I experienced what I feel it was my dark night of the soul. Um, it was only then did I truly understand what loss really was, what loss felt like, looked like. Um, and it was then when I started to understand that the questions, like what happens when life doesn't go as planned? What happens when your ideals, your beliefs are broken, your dreams shattered. What happens then? Where do we go from here? And what's next when life doesn't work out the way we thought it would, or we hoped it would, or we planned on it? Um, what happens? The level of expectations that we put on relationships, that we put on commitments, that we put on other people is incredible. Um, and I don't think a lot of us realize that when we enter into relationships or commitments, because in the beginning it's fun, it's lighthearted, it's, it's laughs, it's jokes, it's, you know, dinner and a movie and, you know, pillow talk at 2 a.m. Um, but so quickly, it our, our hearts intertwine and the expectation of our partners um, raises. It's, it's more than we even realize until the expectation of that person does not, or the actions of that person does not meet our expectations. It's like, you know, we just want the perfect person. We want them to be, you know, reliable, but yet we expect them to be spontaneous. We want them, you know, uh, strong and, and our rock, but yet we want them to have an emotional side and to, to cry when they need to. It's like, it's like sometimes we give them a pair of shoes that don't fit and we get mad when they sit in the closet. It's shoes that nobody can fill because we can't have the perfect life. We can't have the perfect partner because there's no such thing. Um, and when that person comes into our life, um, that soulmate, that twin, whatever you wanna put a label on it, when that person comes into your life, that one person, because you know if you've met them what I'm talking about, when that one person enters your life, all worries go out the window. All of a sudden, your perfect person is standing in front of you. Um, and we kind of ignore the fact that they're not perfect. 
they're just perfect in our eyes. Um, but you instantly, they have your heart before you even had the chance to, to say no. Um, they have your thoughts. They, you know, you're constantly thinking about them. You, they have your future because you want to create it with them. You find yourself secretly making plans, looking on Pinterest at, you know, ideas. You find yourself searching through the paper, looking for houses for sale um, in their area so you guys can move together. Um, you secretly, when nobody's looking, write their last name instead of yours. Yes, guys, ladies still do that sometimes. Um, wondering where it's going to go from here. Excited. Anxious for the future. Um, for the first time, feeling like somebody knows you. Somebody gets you. Somebody truly, truly appreciates who you are. Being able to tell them things you've never told anybody without the fear of judgment. Um, a lot of times, your guys' lives are like mirroring almost you know, having similar situations uh, growing up. And and you find yourself prepping and pre-gaming and preparing for the future with this person. But nobody ever prepares for the fall. Because when that person comes into your life, they're so perfect for you, you can't imagine them ever wanting to leave because they say they feel the same way that you do. And you could never imagine walking away from this person. But when they fail to meet your expectations, and for some of you, one day, they just disappeared. They were here, now they're gone. Um, they fell off the face of the earth. You can't get a hold of them. Um, for some of you, they told you they were leaving, and they walked out, out of the blue. Um, you thought your relationship was great, and now they're packing their bags. Um, nobody prepares you for that. Nobody could prepare you for that because for those of you that that message resonates with, you, A, would never believe them when this person came into your life that that would ever happen because the, the love the two of you share, the connection, the sexual connection, it's nobody would ever walk away from that. So that can't be your story. Um, for two, nobody could describe to you what that feeling feels like. Even if they tried to prepare you, they couldn't because you would still fall. Your heart would still break and you would still be left in this need for healing, um, for the healing to move forward. Um, and that is exactly what happened to me. Um, you know, just a, a quick recap of my life. Uh, nobody need, wants to know my situation, but uh, just a little timeline. Um, four years ago, my I was on top of my world. You know, I had a beautiful home. I had an amazing husband. I had three beautiful kids. I had my dream job uh, working in mental health, uh, social services. Um, you know, I drove a nice car. I, I just felt like I had it all. And when it crumbled apart, I thought, did I take that for granted? Was I thankful enough? Was I, what, you know, what could I have done to prevent the fall? Um, now hindsight, looking back, everything happens for a reason. But in a matter of 90 days, I literally was on the top of my world and I spiraled down and literally had the clothes on my back and three kids to provide for. Um, you know, I don't know if I was in a, a dreamland, a world, I don't know, but all of a sudden secrets were um, came to the surface, uh, divorce papers were filed, uh, we lost a brother to suicide, my less than 30 days after that, that happened within a week of each other. After uh, less than a month from that, my house burnt down with no insurance. So me and my children lost every single thing we owned. Um, two weeks after that, my 
uh, I lost my job due to them closing their doors and relocating to a bigger city. Um, and a week after that, I wrecked my car and um, only had liability insurance on it. And I made a deer my hood ornament. So literally within 90 days, I lost my marriage. I lost my home and every single thing in it. Um, except for the clothes off my back, on my back. I lost a brother and I lost my job and I didn't even have a car for me and my three kids to live in. So literally, I was, I lost it all. Um, you know, I, one thing led to another. I did slowly get back on my feet um, by the good gracious and the beautiful blessing of my parents. Um, they let us stay there. Uh, while we got on our feet for a little bit. Um, I think we were there like four months. Um, and I still felt empty. I still felt broken. Um, I would like to say I had all the faith in the world and I knew everything was gonna work out all right and everything happened for a reason. And I just knew this was gonna bring me to bigger and better places. I would be lying. Um, my background, I am a mental health therapist. I've studied psychology. Um, I have literally had my head in a book for 10 years um, studying, you know, people's emotions and their brain functions. And, and yet when it came down to my own situation, I wanted to crawl in a hole and not see the light of day again. Um, I uh, suffered depression, but everything changed one day when by chance I met somebody who um, I felt was my twin flame and my whole world turned around in like an instant um, but as the journey goes uh, two months after that I got out of the shower and he was gone and I hadn't heard from him for months so I know what the broken feeling feels like um, I've had to crawl up from many many broken times and um, now is no different. I am experiencing yet something even more tragic than that. But in my channel messages today, I feel I got a very important message and I did write it down um, so I wouldn't mess it up actually. <laughs> so when when you are at your most broken, that is when you must have the most faith. One of my favorite Bible verses that my grandmother um, gave to me when I was very little, and, and I've kept on to it for 30 years, um, is Hebrews 11, 1. And the power of that one Bible verse has brought me out of many slumps, but I had a little bit harder time in the last four years. Um, it states, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. So I'll repeat that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. Yet, when you're broken, things hoped for is not just hard to see. It is near impossible to believe. It's, it's like in that moment of heartache, you have to choose. Are you going to choose to believe? Or are you gonna succumb to your situation? And so many times people succumb to their situation because faith is not easy. It's like faith is being handed, you know, all the pieces of your soul that are broken. And yet we are still needing to believe that somehow all these tiny fragments can be made whole again just by me believing they can be whole again. Not, not actually putting them together, but 
sitting there holding him, believing that, that it's going to appear whole again. So faith is hard. Um, so many separate the heart and the thought process. They separate the mental health and emotional health from the soul when really they're all intertwined. Um, so many people believe that the soul and science are two different things. Like I said, I have studied psychology and mental health for years. I have all my life been able to tap into the spiritual realm. I have all my life been able to see spirits. Um, most of my childhood I was terrified. Uh, and that's really what got me into the field of psychology. Um, one time I asked my mom, why can I see this and nobody, you know, my brothers and sisters can't. And she said, because you're more susceptible to it. And I thought, what is this, the common cold? Like, what does that even mean? Um, you know, not knowing that that means you're open to it. You are um, able to receive it um, more so than the, than the others. But to me, that was not a good enough answer. Like, oh my goodness, can you hear the thunderstorm? That is amazing because my channel message was all about a thunderstorm. So, so that's what got me into psychology. That's what put me on my path. Um, because I thought I was crazy. To tell you the truth, I wanted to fix this. I wanted to be able to stop seeing that. I wanted to know why I was crazy. And um, when I finished school, I instantly went right into my dark night of the soul. So I got my book education and my spirit education um, all right there into one. But our essence, our inner being, what makes me me, what makes you you, it's our soul. So when your soul is broken, when, when we are heartbroken, it's our soul that takes the direct hit. It shatters, it becomes fragmented. Um, the soul then becomes invaded it, with pain, with hurt, with that feeling of betrayal, that I wanna throw up feeling. Um, and you realize the person that you once were is no longer. Um, somehow your whole life becomes one big question. Why me? What is the point of this? Who am I? Where do I go from here? And your health of your soul becomes the main focus. Um, many of you have a broken heart that spun you into your spiritual awakening, that sent you on that soul searching quest. Um, now, I don't know why you're broken. I don't know what broke you. I don't know who broke you. But we all at one point in time need healing of being broken. Um, and I'm no expert by any means. But there are a couple of things that I have learned along the way that I feel um, I should share with you. The first thing, the first step to healing your broken heart is to focus on your life, what area of your life that you are hoping for. Um, what area do you need to have faith? Um, some of you are going through things that others couldn't ever even possibly imagine. Um, some of you are going through pain that people have no idea about, that they have never experienced it. Um, some people are finding it hard to get out of bed in the morning. Some people aren't. Um, But you have to believe. You have to believe that anything is possible. Um, because you, sorry, my camera was gonna die. I had to plug it in there. Um, you have to believe all things are possible. You have to believe 
that there are things in this great universe that are more powerful than the situation or the challenge that you're going through. Um, you have to know that your faith is stronger and more powerful than your circumstance. And you have to believe that you have the power to pull yourself up out of it no matter what. Um, you can get yourself right out of this. That's step one. Step two is to find people that you relate to. Um, find your tribe, some people call it. Um, isolation is your enemy and you cannot do this alone. Find those trusted people, those trusted individuals that you can share your journey with because your best friend from sixth grade that you still go and have coffee with every Wednesday may not get it. If they are not in the same journey or in the same vibration or level of ascension that you are in, they're going to say, well, you should have known that was coming. Why don't you leave him anyways? He did it in the past, but you know, whatever. You, you've heard all the naysayers, but they don't know what's in your heart. They don't know what it feels like to experience the pain that you are in. That's for those of you who are in, you know, the twin flame journey. Um, for those of you who are healing a broken heart from loss, from death, you know, find those groups, you know, that have, you know, those support groups, a counselor. It's so important to find individuals that can share in your journey instead of judge you in your journey. Um, there is a huge difference. Um, if you can find people that you can confide in, um, people that will hold you up when your legs are weak and you can't stand anymore. For those of, find people who will take a knee with you when you have tried everything and all you can do is pray. You know, find those people that when you do rise up again, when you do come through that dark night of the soul or that rise of the phoenix or that time of sadness or grieving, that they're going to cheer you on in your race instead of try to beat you to the finish line. Those are the people that are going to um, help heal your heart on a soul level, helping you find your inner peace again. Um, and third is to understand that life is a process. It truly is a journey. We are all here to learn. Um, every experience in life, there is a lesson. We all came here with the intentions to learn um, and get the most out of life we can. So it's a continuous process of cycles, of death and rebirth, of breaking and restoring, of winning and losing. It's constant cycles. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing can stay on the top and never come down. Nothing on the bottom can stay there without coming to the top. It is an equal flow constantly of cycles. When you accept that and, and step into that cycle, um, it's going to heal, help you heal a lot easier. Um, when your soul needs healing, oh my goodness, my whole house just shook. Um, when it needs healing, you need to realize that being broken is not the end. It is most definitely not the end of the road. Brokenness is an opportunity for the beautiful light to shine in. Um, they always say the cracks allow the light to shine through. I think, was that Rumi that said that maybe? I don't remember. But it's so true. Because, you know, take, take, um, what are those called? Stained glass windows. 
when you're right up to them, it just looks like a bunch of little different colored pieces of glass. Stand up next to one at night. It's just, it don't look like anything. But when you sit on, or when you're sitting in church on a Sunday morning and that east sun comes in and the light shines through that window, it makes a beautiful picture and the light that comes through is breathtaking. All of a sudden those fragments that look like a bunch of broken pieces of glass fit together and make a beautiful picture when you allow the light in. No matter how broken your heart is, no matter how fragmented your soul is, you still have your light. You still have that inner light. You'll always have that inner light. Um, no matter how dark the night gets, we are promised that inner light to get us through the night, to guide us, to lead us. Um, no matter how dark of times we are in, that inner light will always lead us home. Um, there's always the light within you that gives you the power to heal. And sometimes we go through these storms to where we feel that light is, is out. It went out. But the power to heal is always within you. Um, the promise of a new day. With every night, there comes the promise of the sun rising in the morning. Um, you know, I have never went to bed at night and thought, gee, I sure hope the sun comes up tomorrow. I got a lot to do. Um, or, you know, just... You know, you never, how do I want to word that? With every new day, you are promised and given the gift of making that day better than yesterday. It doesn't have to be huge and grand every day. It can be like, I didn't burn my toast this morning. Yes. Like, as long as you make every day a little bit better than the day before, pretty soon your whole life is going to be different. Um, a, a mile is a mile, whether you walk it in baby steps or you take it in leaps and bounds, you're still going to make it to the same place. It may take you a little bit longer, but you're getting there. So keep taking those steps forward. Make every day a little bit better than yesterday. Um, the universe gives us this gift every day of the sunshine. Um, just remember to have faith. We have faith every day that it's, um, sorry, I'm getting a storm warning on my thing. Uh, we never wake up and think, gee, I sure hope the sun remembers to show up today. Like it's promised. It's there. That's our gift. Um, it's our gift that it's it's rising. It's here. It's here is your present of the warmth. Because when we go through these difficult times, it feels like the rain is pouring on us. It feels like the sun is never going to come out again. It feels like a hurricane has come through our life and... Um, destroyed everything and sorry that my storm warnings keep popping up so when we have faith that the light will bring a new day and a brand new chance to make today great we have that gift of of promise um, so even if your light is clouded out even if there is a storm coming through. Um, that light will shine continuously. It may be covered in a cloud, but even when a hurricane comes through, the sun is shining, you just can't see it. Um, and the sun returns, it brings warmth. 
It brings growth. It brings color and beauty. Um, but without the rain and the sun, we wouldn't have that growth. So in your life right now, you may feel like you're just, you just been through that massive storm and you're left with all the damage. You're left with the destruction. Um, but the sun will come in. It will illuminate that. It will illuminate the damage that needs to be fixed. And with that, together with the rain, it's going to make you grow. It'll bring you strength. Your roots will grow even deeper into Mother Earth and who you really are. Um, you'll have growth in your soul. You'll begin to bloom and blossom into who you're meant to be. Some of you going through major transformations and emerging as that butterfly. Um, so embrace the change. Um, it's okay to stay in that place of pain. Um, acknowledge your feelings and move forward. Don't unpack your bags and live there. Um, I have been guilty of that. Uh, for the last three weeks, I have been pretty guilty of that. Um, it's, it's really... You really question why but I can promise you there is a reason even if you don't see it yet so I am going to end on that I will see you next time God bless